If you're a naturalist, you got to pick your poison, and and you're, there there really isn't a good naturalistic explanation for the origin of the universe. So I think I think the the materialists are in a box. You might remember Stephen Meyer from his recent appearance on Joe Rogan. Well, I'm excited to announce that in this video, we're actually going to be featuring a clip from a conversation that I recently had with Stephen Meyer, where we basically did like a post. Joe Rogan interview conversation, and I drilled into a lot of the topics that they talked about during his time on that show. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is play like about a two minute clip from his conversation with Joe Rogan, just to give some context for you guys. And then you'll hear the deeper dive that we do into this fascinating topic of the origin of the universe and what are the different potential explanations for it. With that being said, enjoy this Daily Dose of Wisdom. This this idea of intelligent design, my question to you, like right off the bat was, is this an idea that you, did you have a pre, did you have a notion in your mind already that you were trying to prove? Or was this something that you sort of started to believe upon the preponderance of evidence? I was, by the time I got out of college, I was a convinced theist for philosophical reasons. But, it, but I had, at that point, I was completely comfortable with the evolutionary explanation of everything. And then at a conference in my, uh, that I attended uh, while I was working as a geophysicist, uh, it was a conference about the origin of the universe, the origin of life, and the origin and nature of human consciousness. And it was divided on each panel between theists and philosophical materialists who were debating these, these big questions at the intersection of science and philosophy. And I was kind of stunned to learn, or to, to perceive at least, that the theists seemed to have the intellectual initiative in each of these big discussions, that materialism was a philosophy that was a spent force. It was not explaining where life first came from or the universe came from, let alone consciousness. And so I began in a sense, on a kind of intellectual journey to see where these new evidences, the evidence for the beginning of the universe or the fine-tuning of the universe, or the, the thing that really intrigued me was the discovery that at the foundation of life and even the very simplest cells, we have this amazingly complex code. When you were on the Joe Rogan Experience, you mentioned going to a conference that dealt with origin of life, um, origin of the universe, and origin of human consciousness, and that you walked away from that conference um, feeling that the sort of the high ground belonged to the theist as opposed to the materialist. I was really curious to hear sort of, if you could, let's just start with origin of the universe. What are the different explanatory options for the origin of the universe? And why do you think that intelligence or an intelligent designer is the more reasonable option? Well, I'd frame that... Um issue well that, that's fine let's let's dive in on that the um the first the conference it was early in my career it was a conference that was discussing these three big issues at the intersection of science and philosophy or science and religion uh the question of the origin of the universe was the first uh issue up and the conference was divided interestingly between very elite scientists who were either theists or materialists and they were debating, well, what does our best evidence about the origin of the universe or the origin of life imply as to which of these different, uh, these two competing philosophical systems of thought is the better one to hold? Which one provides a better explanation or provides a better uh, sense of coherence to the data? And in the first session, the great uh, American uh, astrophysicist, uh, an astronomer, Alan Sandage, ascended to the podium and surprised many people in the audience by sitting down on the theistic side of the panel. Hmm. And it turns out that he had been a long, he was a, an agnostic Jew who was a well-known scientific, agno, uh, scientific materialist, fairly hard-bitten scientific materialist through much of his career. He had been Edwin Hubble's PhD student. He was a grad student of Hubble's. And he had been for a couple of decades involved in um, verifying the expansion of the universe in all, all quadrants of the night sky. And so in his talk, he gave a talk about the evidence for what we now call the Big Bang Theory and the evidence that the universe had a beginning and reflected on that evidence rather poignantly, uh, pointing out that 
the evidence we have for a beginning from multiple, and there are multiple lines of such evidence, suggested that the material universe itself had a beginning before which there was no matter to do the causing. If matter itself comes into existence at a finite time ago, then positing a prior material state to explain the origin of matter is self-contradictory. And instead he said, you know, what we're looking at, he said, here is evidence for what can only be called a super natural event. And there was a beat between the word super and natural. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, kind of, he then went on to reflect on this um, and it announced that he had had a religious conversion and that the scientific evidence about the beginning of the universe, about the fine tuning of the universe and some other things actually were influences in his coming to theistic belief. It was not because of, but it was not in spite of these evidences. It was in in part because of them. He also realized there was something inside himself, which he described very, again, poignantly, uh, that was reluctant to, to consider the possibility of a transcendent intelligence as the cause of the universe. But then he realized it might be the better explanation. So why am I so resistant to this? It was a fascinating discussion. Anyway, the there are different, there are, several different cosmological models, but the, the two main are the standard Big Bang Theory and the inflationary cosmological model. Both of them affirm that the universe had a beginning. There are multiple lines of evidence supporting that from observational astronomy, the redshift evidence that the, the light from distant galaxies is being stretched out, indicating that the galaxies themselves are moving away. There's the evidence of the cosmic background radiation. There's been additional um, observations about anomalies within the cosmic background radiation. They're also explained by, by the standard Big Bang. Uh, on Joe Rogan, I talked about the new evidence that's come in from the James Webb telescope, which was initially falsely reported as challenging the idea that the universe was expanding outward from a be beginning. But as I discussed, I had, a, I think, about a 14-minute clip that the Rogan people put up where I explained why the uh, the James Webb data is actually confirming the picture of the universe we've had of a universe that's expanding outward from a beginning point. And I've had two, two separate astrophysicists, one at the University of Washington and one at University of California, San Diego, um, uh, uh, communicate with me subsequently to affirm that, yes, you got that right. That's what we astrophysicists think. So, so there's lots of evidence from um, astrophysical and astronomical evidence, but there are also two really compelling uh, proofs or mathematical uh, results based on theoretical physics that are also, in one case, highly suggestive of a beginning, and in the other case, pretty definitive proof of a beginning. This is, I'm referring to first the singularity theorems of Hawking and Penrose and Ellis from the late 60s and early 70s that I think are at least highly suggestive of a beginning. There's a loophole, there's a way of getting around their proof of an absolute singularity, but it involves something that I think has uh, called quantum cosmology, which I think has theistic implications for other reasons. And then there's another proof based on special relativity, uh, the board guth vilenkin theorem, which I think closes that loophole uh, that is left by the, the, the uh, Hawking Penrose discussion. And so you have these multiple lines of evidence and developments in, within theoretical physics, all affirming a beginning to the physical universe, the universe of matter, space, time, and energy. And that's a very significant philosophical, uh, that, that, re, that scientific result has very significant philosophical implications because uh, whereas if you have a, a materialistic or naturalistic worldview, that worldview affirms the eternality of matter, that matter and energy are eternal and self-existent mm -hmm. and do not therefore need an external creator. But if the universe itself had a, a, a came into existence a finite time ago, it raises a question of causal origins. And it requires a cause which transcends the physical domains of matter, face, space, time, and energy. And then uh, for, for that and other reasons, I think has a kind of... Um, uh, the, the the causal profile of the entity which would be sufficient to produce the universe is one that starts to look an awful lot like a transcendent creator, the creator of, of theism. Um, and so um, that's that's the way I read the situation. There are newer cosmological models that have been proposed. There was a oscillating universe model in the 80s that, that kind of went by the boards as there were both... Uh, thermodynamic and observational considerations that counted against it. Uh, Sir Roger Penrose has formulated 
a newer version of, it's a kind of oscillating universe model. It's called the cyclical conformal cosmology. I, I write about it in the epilogue to the, the second edition of my book, the paperback edition, uh, and show that it's, um, it, it, if true, it has huge unexplained fine tuning problems that it raises. And so it's kind of a out of the frying pan into the fire type of thing. Uh, but it's it's also a highly speculative model for which there's no direct evidence. It's it's uh, a, an, a yet another attempt to circumvent the obvious conclusion of the experiment or the uh, observational evidence that we have. So I think there's a pretty strong set of indicators that the universe has a beginning. And if you want to get around that, the, probably the best way to do that is to invoke something like quantum cosmology. But that actually didn't get around the beginning in the end. And it also portrayed the universe as arising from pure math, which is very weird. How do you get matter out of math? Uh, when you think about that, you realize that math is conceptual and the concepts exist in minds. Even some of the proponents of quantum cosmology, such as the uh, physicist Alexander Vilenkin, uh, have said, well, are we then, if we're, if we're invoking these prior mathematical laws as the explanation for the origin of the universe, are we, are we really saying, therefore, that the universe came from a mind so i think i think the the materialists are in a box i think there's there's different ways to try to get around it but the the newer cosmological models invoke prior unexplained fine-tuning which suggests a mind those that are trying to get around uh um the finite nature of the universe the the attempt to get around the cause the, the evidence for beginning with quantum cosmology i think failed on its own terms and had its own theistic implications if true and uh, and so I, I I I lay all this out in the book. Is there's kind of a cosmological trilemma. Pick your if you're a naturalist, you got to pick your poison. And and you're there there really isn't a good naturalistic explanation for the origin of the universe. Thank you guys so much for watching this clip. There's going to be more videos in this style where we build on top of the conversation that Dr. Meyer had with Joe Rogan. So if that's the kind of thing that you're into, don't forget to subscribe and turn the notification bell on so that you don't miss it because sometimes YouTube can get sneaky. Sometimes the algorithm can just hide from you. So go ahead and subscribe and join. I'll see you guys in the next video.